CBS 4 News at 7. We begin tonight with breaking news. The National Rifle Association has filed a federal lawsuit over the new gun safety law signed today by Governor Rick Scott. The NRA says the new law violates the Second Amendment by raising the age to buy guns from 18 to 21. The NRA's representatives in Tallahassee say that they had lawyers there and in Washington working on the suit. And they argue this particularly burdens women between the ages of 18 and 21 who, say they, who they say pose almost no risk of committing violent crimes. Now, they filed this lawsuit a short time ago after Governor Rick Scott signed the bill surrounded by families of the Parkland shooting victims and a bipartisan group of lawmakers. I want to thank everybody for being here. This is... Um it's been a tough time for our state, but this is, I want to thank the legislature. This was not easy. It was hard fought. There was a lot of emotion involved. But if you look at these legislative leaders up here, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened without their help, and it wouldn't have happened for all these families that made sure that people knew the importance of this. The law does fall short of what Scott and some shooting survivors wanted. CBS 4's Adriana Diaz is in Tallahassee with details of what's in the law. Rick, Ruta Bay, Elliot, it was a suspenseful day here at the Capitol with people wondering, will he sign or won't he sign? The governor, of course, opposes arming teachers in schools, and that is a provision in this legislation that some teachers can be armed in schools in the counties that opt into the program. Now, the governor said he thought a lot about this. He prayed about it. He met with family members of victims in the Stoneman Douglas shooting, and he decided that that voluntary part of the legislation was enough for him. Him and that he supports the other parts of this legislation, like raising the minimum age for anyone who wants to buy a rifle to 21. Also, providing $400 million in funding for programs like strengthening mental health in schools, as well as strengthening school safety, hardening schools. The legislation also calls for the creation of an app that would allow students or members of the community to report dangerous threats and gives law enforcement the right to seize firearms from anyone making such threats. But there's one thing it doesn't do. It doesn't ban assault rifles. Governor, the one thing that the students had a consensus on is that they wanted an assault weapons ban. This bill doesn't, this law doesn't include that. I've been clear. I, I think rather than uh, banning specific uh, weapons, we need to ban specific people from having any weapon. Um, that's what I've said all along. That's what I believe. Uh, that's why I think this restraining order opportunity is, is the right thing to do. Oh, I think this is the beginning. I think that there's now going to be a real conversation about how we make our schools safe. I mean, it's, I think part of it is making sure we have trained law enforcement. I think part of it's going to make sure we harden our schools. I think the other part is, is we, we've, we, we have more money, as you know, in, in, for mental health um, resources, which we need. Don't be threatening schools. I mean, if you, if, you know, we, we need to take all these things seriously, and I hope everybody uh, takes it seriously that we've got to figure out how to come together to keep these kids safe. The family members of all 17 victims say they support this law. Some of them were there today standing with the governor as he signed the bill into law. One of them was Tony Montalto, the father of 14-year-old Gina Montalto, who was killed in Parkland. He said this is an important first step, but he said that his family and the others have paid a terrible price for this progress. Now, the governor, who of course has an A-plus rating from the NRA, he's an NRA member, defied the NRA with this move. Earlier this week, an NRA lobbyist said it was a display of bullying and coercion. But the governor and the bipartisan lawmakers who passed this legislation say what they did was keep their promise to take action after the Parkland shooting. Rick Rudabay, Elliot. Adriana Diaz reporting from Tallahassee. Thank you, Adriana. Standing next to the governor today was Andrew Pollack, whose daughter Meadow was killed in the shooting at the school. Here's what he had to say about the new law. To everyone that's watching out there, I wish I could tell you that I'm happy. But how could we be happy? We buried, he buried his sister, and I buried my daughter. To me, this is, this is a start for us. This is a start. And after this moment, we're going to work on moving forward and hitting every other state to make sure they follow the lead of Florida. 
Soon after Governor Scott signed the bill, Florida Senator Bill Nelson released a statement saying, quote, this is a first step, and if we really want to do something to combat gun violence like what we saw in Parkland, we must require universal background checks on the purchase of a gun and get these assault rifles off, off our streets. Until we've done that, we still have a lot of work to do. And Senator Marco Rubio tweeted, Today, Governor Rick Scott signed Florida law that makes our state safer from gun violence. In D.C., the Stop School Violence Act provides federal funding for many of the measures in the Florida law. It has broad bipartisan support. Let's get it passed.